it's Facebook Live Friday. I am up visiting my mom, so I am camped out in the spare bedroom. And um, I'm gonna try to make this little small space work. Today we're gonna talk about how the tennis ball, the simple tennis ball, can help cure, save, make your muscle spasms and tight spots feel so much better. I have taught hundreds of patients how to do this and um, I had one patient come in who, after I taught him how to do it, and he came back the next day and he said, oh my gosh, it's the best thing ever. It's like, he called it poor man's massage. So I thought it was hilarious. So we are going to just wait a couple seconds for some people to join us. I know there are a few people who were going to be jumping on today and um, participating in our broadcast. And if you are participating, please, at the bottom, leave comments. Please share this with anyone who you think might find it beneficial. And also remember to hit the thumbs up and the hearts buttons on parts that you are particularly enjoying because that helps me tailor future talks to your liking. I hope everybody's having a good beginning to their holiday. I know I am. We are up celebrating on early Christmas with my mom and then we are off to Arizona early next week to have Christmas down there. And um, so I hope you all are as well. I know I can see there's just one more person getting ready to jump on and then we'll get started. So the tennis ball is such a great tool for muscle tension, spasms, trigger points, and can be really adjunctive in uh, helping other therapies that you're already doing like chiropractic or physical therapy, acupuncture or massage. And um, it's such a great way to help lots of muscle tightness release in your body and we're gonna show you how to do that. And it may seem pretty simple, but there are some fun little tricks you can apply to get to areas that are maybe more difficult. And so we'll go over that today as well. Now, I'm holding two tennis balls. Typically, I recommend just using one. So our tutorial today, if you will, is gonna be primarily just using the one tennis ball, but I didn't want to forget that many people advise their patients to tape two tennis balls together and use that up and down along the spine, and you certainly can do that. But I find using one, you can get far more specific and target particular areas more easily. Now I am using a tennis ball, it is what I recommend. You can also use a lacrosse ball. The issue with the lacrosse ball is it's a lot harder, so there is the risk of pushing too hard and irritating the tissues. So just be cognizant of that if you are choosing to use my first thumbs up, thanks whoever that was. Awesome. Cognizant of using that lacrosse ball because it can irritate and the tennis ball is squishier, so it's a great place to start. Okay, we are going to get started. Many people have tightness between the shoulders, so that's the first one we're going to talk about. And so I have a wall here, and that's uh, the reason I set you up the way I did is because we have to use our wall. Now, you can also do these exercises or stretches on the floor with having you on top of the tennis ball, I find that a little bit more difficult to be very specific and to also monitor the pressure you're putting against the ball. So this is a great way. Now, anytime you are using the ball to release muscle tension, make sure you're not uh, pushing in really hard because it negates the whole purpose. Because guess what happens when you push against it? Your muscles tighten and we're trying to get them to release. So you take your tennis ball and we're gonna go right into the mid-back. So what I do is the side of the mid-back I wanna work on, I take my opposite hand and I tuck the ball back behind the shoulder blade and I've got it pinned there now. So what I'm gonna do now is bring my hips off the wall so that the only thing touching the tennis ball is the area of my mid-back that I wanna be working on. Now there's two ways, in any spot that I show you, there's two ways that you can apply the tennis ball. Boy, does that feel good. You can put direct pressure, and that direct pressure sends a signal back to the spinal cord saying, hey, relax me, relax me, and so you don't have to do anything. You just let your body weight lean into it, and that nerve signal will come back around to the muscle and relax it. And so you wanna hold that for at least 30 seconds, okay? And just find a tender point, even if it, maybe refers out to a little bit of a, you know, out to your shoulder or around your ribs a little bit, that's okay. Just hold for 30 seconds. 
If the price is just too unbearable, then come off it a little bit. And that's the nice thing about standing is that you can really vary the pressure. But you want to hold that pressure. It's called trigger point therapy release. Doesn't matter what it's called, it just works really well. And as I said, hold for 30 seconds and then go to the next spot. Now, what I can do is I just put my butt on the wall and I lean forward a little bit and that just dropped the ball two inches. So now I've got a new spot I can work. Again, hips off the wall and apply pressure, but mostly just your body weight. You're not pushing in, okay? So now I've got a couple really good spots that I've worked and I said there were two ways you can do it. One is direct pressure for 30 seconds and the other is rolling up and down and around. Now the tricks with that is you don't wanna bounce over the bones, okay? So don't go from one side to the other. Don't go over any of the real bony protuberances because that will be painful and it can cause irritation. So you just wanna stay in the fleshy, muscly part of the, um, what I call the trolley tracks on either side of the spine. And you can roll up and down and it feels really, really good. So that's how you can do the mid back. Now, I just drop the ball into my hand because I'm gonna move down into the low back. And so you take your tennis ball and you just tuck it into one side of the spine or the other. Now notice my hips are still on the wall with this one and you position it. And again, you can just rest there and hold the pressure point or you can do little mini squats. And what you can't see is my feet are quite far out from the wall. It gives you lots of stability, wide base of stability and you can just roll up and down. You can turn a little toward it. Now you have to remember, you have two floating ribs at the bottom of your rib cage. And what that means is your rib 11 and your rib 12 don't wrap around the front and hook up here. So they're just out there and they're tender. They, if you roll right over those little floaty ribs, that can be sore. So just be careful as you're getting up toward where that low back transitions into the mid back. Just be gentle there. Lower down, you can use a little bit more force. And again, just up and down and find your spot and then just hold on to it. And you can do a couple minutes per area, that's fine. And if after you've used the tennis ball, it feels a little tender, use some ice pack on it. That can just take care of that right away. But just be cognizant that you're not doing it too hard. If you have any bruising the next day or if it's really tender the next day, that usually means you've gone too forcefully. Sometimes I've had a patient on the table and I've lifted up their shirt to start working on them and there's bruises up their back and it's because they've gone way too aggressively with their tennis ball. So just be careful with that. So we've done the mid back, we've done the low back. Now I've got two secret areas I want to show you that almost everybody is tight in. Right here, your glute medius and piriformis are very tight on most people. Now you have a ball that fits into a socket called your hip joint. We don't wanna roll over that. That would not be comfortable. So what I tell patients is that part where your hip hinges, don't roll over that. You're gonna do the C around the hip, okay? There's a fleshy part here and there's a fleshy part here and you wanna get your ball in there. Now here's the fun part. You can do that against the wall. Turn perpendicular to the wall, take your tennis ball and you just tuck it right on that fleshy part I was telling you about. And now I'm leaning all my body weight into it and I'm holding the position and you can feel it. And then you can roll around just like that. And it feels so good. Hi Morgan, hi Amy, hi Brent. What's funny about Brent being on is Brent and my mother are watching live from the next room. So that's kind of fun. I hope they're out there practicing their tennis ball while we're doing this. So I worked all through here, rolling and just pinning and holding, and that releases all the glute and hip tension we get over time. It's really good to loosen up your hips. So hip release with the tennis ball is a nice little secret spot you can hit. Okay, and the final one, everybody is tight here because we're doing this all day. And those that have shoulder problems, you will really benefit from this. We're gonna work on what's called the rotator cuff musculature. And basically, in lay terms, it's the bottom of the shoulder blade, but it's really hard to get at here. It keeps slipping out and it's, it doesn't work this way. So the trick to do it is you take the hand of the shoulder you're gonna work and you put it on your opposite shoulder. 
And what that does is it extends the shoulder blade out so it's much more accessible. So hand on the shoulder blade, just like that, okay? And you're gonna take your tennis ball and get down in a little bit of a, of a squat. And you're gonna, it's like you wanna paste that shoulder blade right on the wall. And so you do that and then you take your, your tennis ball, you tuck it right under your shoulder blade and you roll. And that, oh, there's a good spot. Now, with the shoulder blade, the good spot that I just hit, how I know that, is because I can feel tenderness right to the front of my shoulder. Why would I feel that? Well, your rotator cuff muscles come from behind your shoulder blade and insert right here. So if you're on the right spot, that's probably gonna refer a little bit of tension right to the front of that shoulder. So don't be afraid of that. That's a good thing. And you can work with those muscles behind your shoulder blade to help ease that. And you'll find over time, as you continue to work those shoulder blades, that you'll get less and less of that referral up to the front of the shoulder. So we talked about tennis ball between the mid-back shoulder blades, not on the spine, but on the trolley tracks on either side. We talked about the low back. Great, keep the hips on the wall when you do that, and you can just slide up and down the wall with that. We talked about working the hip around the ball and the socket of the hip joint, not over it. And then we also talked about the shoulder blade by putting the opposite hand across to the other shoulder, that brings that shoulder blade out and it makes it really easy to work onto that shoulder. Now finally, you can also get on the ground and you can work your IT bands, okay? And we talked a little bit about this in a video I did from Spain where we talked about the stick roller and using a lacrosse ball for hiking and running and, and how great that was. So you can refer back to that video if you choose. Uh, to get more details on that. And then also feet. I cannot leave without mentioning using tennis ball on feet. It is so therapeutic to loosen up all of those little muscles in your feet by rolling underneath the arch of the foot and to the base of where those toes can separate apart. So if you're watching TV or you have your computer sitting at your computer, throw that tennis ball on the ground and just roll your feet around on it. They will love it. Okay, so we are done for today. We just wanted to talk a little bit about the tennis ball and all the benefits it can have for muscle tension, spasming, trigger points. I wanna remind you that if you have not signed up for WellFit and Fed emails, do so immediately. Go to wellfitandfed.com and on the homepage, there is a place where you can drop your email and you will get all sorts of new recipes, workouts, private information for WellFit and Fed posse or what I call my poodles only and I look forward to sharing that information with you. And you will be first to get the hot off the press release about the program we're doing in January. And so that is called the Three Day Reset 4x4 and you'll be hearing more about that. Okay guys, thanks for joining me so much. I appreciate it. Hi Linda. And let me just see, I think Amy might have a question. Yes, so my sister-in-law asked if my brother-in-law should be doing this. And yes, he should, because he just did the 20, 21, 22, 21 day push-up challenge, which was really cool. And his shoulders are probably really sore from that. So this would be a really good one for him to do as well. So thank you everybody for joining me. I hope you have a great holiday couple of weeks. I will still be broadcasting live next Friday. And uh, I would also love to know what you'd like to hear about next Friday or the Friday after that or the Friday after that. So send me your ideas in the comments below and any applicable links, I'll throw a couple links on there for a great place to get your tennis balls and uh, I'll put a link to the stick that I broadcasted about before and lacrosse balls. So, all right guys, have a great day. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye.